I knew I was being threatened. Do you think it's worth holding out? I mean, I've heard some pretty ugly things about those guys. Ugly stories. Watch them flee. Watch them flee. Rap, 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 rap. Watch them flee. Hip hop heads. We do it like this. I'm lying 50, but I'm good for it, okay? You ain't got it. Get out. Will, give me $50. Nope. Give me $50, Will. Now listen to me, J.D., please. The bus fare to Hollywood is $62.80, and that don't leave no gambling money. Will, give me $50. You want to walk to California? Give me $50, Will. Come on. <laughs> J.D. called, and J.D. has got a full house. A straight flush? Yeah, I guess I got lucky. You drew two cards to a straight flush? That happens sometimes, mister. What about that card between your feet? Didn't you like that one? Yeah, I wonder how that got there. Anytime you me feel like jumping in here and helping me out. Shoot, you're doing just fine. <laughs> No! Will! No! Well, I thought you were just gonna let him kill me. <laughs> Hold it right there, young fella. Well, I don't guess you've had enough, have you? Or do you want us to go out and call a local sheriff? Save yourself a dime. Take the big one first. Oh. 
we'll go back in there? For what? I don't know, but I'll go back in if you will. Ow. Now, that just doesn't seem like the smart thing to do, J.D. You mean we're going to let them get away with that? Didn't say that. Come on. <laughs> you see the face on that cowboy and you do the gun on him? <laughs> run all the way to California. <laughs> what, what's your count now? Okay, let her rip. <laughs> They're taking my record. Knock off. Knock in on it. <laughs> all units, all units, listen here, this is the sheriff talking. Come in, come in, anybody. Come on. Read you, boss. Bubba, I got two warthogs on Route 4 heading for the old McDaniel side and in a record. You stopping me, hear me? You want to shut Buckham for speeding? Speeding? They done an aggravated assault on a police officer, stole a vehicle, damaged property, destroyed county equipment, and attempted murder. Do you block them off that road, you hear me? Yes, sir. to see yet? No. You still plan on reading all the books in the encyclopedia? Uh-huh. Well, you're gonna be 80 ball and tooth this time you get through. 
Maybe, but there won't be a smarter 80 bald and toothless old goat in America. Well, now, Will, I ain't putting down your learning, but there's a lot of me and you got to do with our lives, son. Well, we still got several years left before we're staring at 80. I know, but I mean a million things. Man, we got a bulldog, some steers, Madison Square Garden. Drive us an 18 wheeler from Maine to Alaska. We're going on them shrimp boats down in Mobile Bay. Force some steel up in Ohio. Drink all the beer and love all the women. It's gonna take a long time, son. And then when we get our gut full, see, we'll find a lady that looks like Venus de Milo, cooks like mama. Then we'll settle down and have 12 youngins apiece. What do you think? We do half of that, we won't live to be 80. Yeah, but what a way to go. <laughs> I love it. Hey. Well, this ain't at all the way we had it planned, is it? I mean, we're gonna leave that ranch in Montana, and we're gonna travel all over the country. We're gonna see all the places we ain't ever seen. Did you know there was more than one queen of Egypt named Cleopatra? And the famous one, she was all set to marry one brother, and she went and poisoned another brother. First stop, Hollywood. Plenty of work, a lot of sunshine. Arms is right off the trees. All them pretty legs walking around. Man, that... Cleopatra, she got this Anthony to commit suicide by making believe she already killed herself. Now nah, we ain't going west, we're heading east. And neither one of us got the foggiest notion where we're going. And for your information, Will Eubanks, we got $18.60 between us and a vagrancy charge. And I'm cold. And hungry. My stomach feel like a gas factory. Get the light out of my eyes. Just wanted to see the tears. J.D., come alive. Huh? Oh. Where are we? We are where you want your ashes scattered when the Grim Reaper takes you. Are you fun at me? Oh. We're in the one place you know more about than any cowboy living or dead. Hot damn, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh, you bet. Music City, USA! <laughs> uh, here comes trouble. Morning, fellas. Morning. You want I should knock your heads here or take you someplace else to do? Well, Will, I guess this is the end of my dream, son, but you tried, and at least I'll go out happy. You see, mister, I'm, I'm a sick man, and, and all I wanted to do was see Nashville before I passed on. You look pretty healthy to me. Uh, yeah, well, it's one of them, uh, it's one of them creeping diseases. You see, it don't even show up till it's, it's ready to kill you stone dead. I mean, how long did the doc give me, Will, old buddy? Six weeks? Right about that. <laughs> I got a notion you'll outlive me, but I admire a man who can tell a lie as big as that without blinking. Now, get. Well, sir, a sick and dying man sal salute you. Our mess, J.D., you know that? <laughs> yeah, but I naturally got the charm in it. Charm will not fill your gut. Now, we better find a YMCA, dump our gear, and start looking for jobs. That's a good idea, but first we gotta call Lonnie. Lonnie who? Don't you remember Lonnie Grimes? Two weeks ago, Kansas City Chiefs and a Viking. He was drunk for two days, J.D. He won't remember us. His exact words were, if you get to town, call me. He gave me his phone number. People there it is. are always saying that, J.D., and hoping you'll forget it. The trouble with you, Will Eubanks, is you ain't got no faith. Now, give me a dime. Let's find the phone. No. No. Hello? Uh, hello, uh, Lonnie Grimes? Yep. Uh, Lonnie, this is, uh, J.D. Reed. You remember you met me and my buddy Will at a football game a couple weeks ago? And uh, you told us we were ever in town to call you, and here we are. <laughs> oh, we got blind for two days. Yeah, well, I'm glad you remembered us, Lonnie. Oh, listen, I'm sorry I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days. I got an idea, PJ. Yeah, uh, no, 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 it, it's, it's J.D. Uh, J.D. and Will. Right. Why don't you guys stay at my place while uh, I'm out of town? I got a sweet little vet you can drive, too. Oh, well, that's great, Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, and listen, do me a favor, will you? Pick me up a package while I'm gone. I'd be glad to. Yeah, well, take this down now. Wait, I'm, I'm, writing, it, I'm writing it down. Uh-huh. Okay, I, yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank you, Lonnie. Now, you make yourself at home and have a real good time. Okay, bye. He didn't remember us. Wrong, wrong. As a matter of fact, he said we can stay at his digs. He's leaving town for a few days, and uh, not only that, we can use his car. What's the catch? <laughs> No catch, my boy. That's called Southern Hospitality. Now, he wants us to run a little errand for him, and then we'll get on over there. Come on, let's go. Get your bag. Yeah. Well, good life. Here we come. Here. Hold on to that. I'll get the cat. Cat. Come on. Come on, you old partners, okay? Picked up the package. I'm thinking a shot of B-12 and four dozen horses, and I'll just come down here and kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> what we got to do is we got to get us a couple of bathing suits. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Hey, Chief, uh, where's the piano player? <laughs> Take you all week to sit on that thing. Will? Shoot. Lonnie done got him a playhouse. That's what Lonnie got. Look at that kitchen, Will. Who? Where's the bedroom? I want to see the bedroom. <laughs> J.D., look what I found. Hey, come here, look what I found. This guy ain't even used this encyclopedia. Well, he's used this bedroom. Come in here and look. Now, you're talking about eating high on a hog. Get a load of this. <laughs> huh? <laughs> wow! What do you think? <laughs> hey, and look at this here bath. Come here, look at this bathtub. Shoot! <laughs> you believe in that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'll toss you for who goes first. Well, you can get the Dallas Cowboys in that bathtub, or their cheerleaders, or both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where the dime board is. Sorry, I rang the doorbell, but no one answered, and and it was open, so... No harm done, ma'am? No, no harm done. Make yourself home. What can we do for you, huh? I want you to help me find my sister. I don't rightly understand, ma'am. Well, I got a wire last week saying that my sister Carla had died. And then when I got here, well, 
No one here seems to know anything about Carlo. Not the police or the hospitals or, or even the funeral home. I mean, no one. Yeah, now, ma'am. Don't cry. I'm sorry. It's just that we were so close. I'm only a couple of years older than Carla, and after our folks passed away, we sort of brought each other up, you know. You have sisters. I don't know, ma'am. Well, I haven't given up hope. I... I guess it could be somebody's idea of a cruel joke. She was just so sweet trusting, you know. I, I worried about her when she came down here to Nashville all by herself, and now I, I just don't know what to do anymore. Ma'am? Uh, miss? Mrs. Mrs. Harper, Kate Harper. Well, we sure do feel for you, Miss Harper. Ain't that right, J.D.? But why are you telling us all this? Well, because a private investigator is my only hope now. That seems like a reasonable idea, ma'am, but I still don't know what you... Lonnie Grimes, what's he do for a living? Oh, for case, that's why he's out of town. He's a private investigator. Ma'am, we just ain't the people you think we are. No, the phone book said you specialize in missing persons. J.D., could you explain it to her, ma'am? I just gotta get out of this frock. I feel stupid. Excuse me. What? Explain what? Well, uh, see, Will's a sensitive man, and, uh, it tears him up kind of bad when a lady cries. What he wanted me to tell you was, uh... Oh, please, you just gotta help me. Look, I've got a thousand dollars with me, but, but I could get some more. Now, no. A thousand dollars? Well, then I'm gonna listen to what you got to say. Is this your sister? Yeah. I was always what you'd call the brainy type, but, uh, well, Carla had that angel face and the sweetness that went with it. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it takes a little more than good looks to make it in the music business, huh? I mean, uh, even Dolly Parton's got to have a voice to go with her, you know, her good looks. Well, Carla had a voice. She had a real good voice. She was only here a few months before she got a demo record, and, and then she won an amateur contest, and did some club dates, and, well, there was even some talk about a record contract. Then came that telegram from the Barnaby man. Barnaby? Who's Barnaby? Oh, he's the man who runs the Country Music Wax Museum. That's what Carla worked for a while when she first got into town. I called over there, talked to his wife. She said he never even sent a telegram. She hung up on me. I called back three times, three times she hung up on me. just as soon as you find out what happened to her. Well, I tell you what, we'll do everything we can possibly do. Now, you go back to your hotel room and you relax, and we'll call you if we come up with anything, okay? Okay. okay. J.D., yeah. um, you will hold on to that picture, won't you? It's the only one I got. I sure will. You take care now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. And who... J.D., come see this! What is it? <laughs> Look at this. What would a fellow be doing with a setup like this in his bedroom? Well, the trouble with you, Will you Banks, is you've led two shelters of a life. Now get your clothes on. We've got some work to do. What kind of work? Well, we're going to help that poor girl find her sister. Why should we? That's why. <laughs> Detectives, J.D., it ain't honest. What, a thousand bucks and all we gotta do is find out what happened? We get another thousand? But we ain't detectives. Well, neither is Jack Lloyd or Buddy Epson. But I bet you they pay him a hundred dollars a day to pretend they are. J.D., 
You're gonna end up filthy richer in jail. Look, we ask a couple of questions. We get a couple of answers. We find out what happens. Miss Harper goes back to New York happy. Or at least not quite as unhappy. Now, where's the car? Grimes. I'm looking for Grimes. Grimes. Holy smoke, look at that. Shoot. <laughs> where are we going? To the wax museum, my boy. <laughs> Tell everybody we're detectives. That's a lie. It ain't no lie, it's a fear. And there's a big difference. Everybody feels. I don't, if I can help it. Well, you can't help it, so come on now. And don't worry. Politicians fib all the time and they run the country. And that's George Jones. And that's it. Well, well, that's that's him. Howdy, you the manager? The manager? No, that ain't the manager. That's the king of country music, Will. Now, uh, Mr. A. Cuff, yeah. my name's J.D. Reed, and this is my friend, Will you Banks. And boy, I can't tell you how tickled I am oh, to see you. This is a pleasure meeting you, gentlemen, <laughs> both of you. Yes, Where do you sir. think we ought to put this, Mr. A. Cuff? Just lay it down on the little bench there, darling. That'll be all right. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to talk to the manager. What about? About Carla Wade. Isn't that the uh, little blonde that uh, used to work with you? Well, she's a lovely lady. My husband's in his office. He's right back through there. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Will. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, uh, Mr. Acuff, could I have your autograph? Sure you can. Got a paper? No, sir, but you can just write in my hat there. Oh, I can write in the hat, sure. <laughs> Written in them before. Hey, you know I got one of your yo-yos. You left it on the stage in Pawnee, Oklahoma. Pawnee, Oklahoma? I won it from a dude in the crap game. Oh, <laughs> I did. I you turned down $40 for it. Forty dollars. I sure do. Listen, if there's anybody else out there who wants a yo-yo for forty dollars, me and you are going in business. I'll get you a whole truckload of them things. <laughs> All right, so you got the deal. I'm here to tell you, Carla was one of the finest, sweetest kids you'd ever hope to see. Was. I mean, when she was here, she was. I suppose she still is. And how come you sent that telegram to her sister? What telegram? I didn't even know she had a sister. J.D., the, this is Mr. Barnaby. He remembers Carla, thinks a lot of her. Hello, Mr. Barnaby. So did Roy. How'd Carla come to leave? Yeah, she had it in her head to be a star. Had to be. But while she worked here, she sold tickets, helped my wife with the wax figures, helped me with the books, that sort of thing. But Carla decided to move along after she made that demo record. Now, did you have a chance to hear it? I hope to tell you. Fact of the matter is, she is such a treasure, my wife and I set up a session for her. Sort of like a present, you know. Hey, here's a copy. It was a pretty thing. That morning, she got herself all decked out. And she stood there in that studio just like an angel child. Make it through the night. Let me be your baby. Tell me it'll be all right. Let me be your baby. Tell me it'll be all right. You'd have thought we'd given her a million dollars instead of that little bit that session cost. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, listen, if anything comes of this, I owe it to all of you, too. A week later, she just up and quit. Hadn't seen her since. For a while, she'd call me or my wife, and then we stopped here. Uh, do you have any idea where we could find her? No. Nope. But if you do, you tell her she's got friends that'd like to see her. You hear? Do you mind if we hold on to this? It's yours. Thank you, Mr. Barnaby. You've been a real help. Thank you. Well, I see he gave you her demo. Yes, ma'am. Did he tell you what a sweet, virginal little saint she was? Seemed right fond of her. Well, that's where you're smarter than I was. You could tell how he felt about it right off, couldn't you? I had to walk in on that record session to find out. She was a tramp. That's 
what she was, a two-faced, hypocritical little tramp. Make it through the night. Let me be your baby. Tell me it'll be all right. Let me be your baby. Tell me it'll be all right. A friend of mine told me my husband had put up a thousand dollars for that demo session. Baby doll, you are terrific. I'm gonna make you the biggest star in this here town. And I'm gonna do a few things for you too, you animal. Oh. I came down there too late to stop it, but in time to catch him. I fired her on the spot. Uh, ma'am, you ain't exactly telling it like your husband. My husband is a damn liar. You know, Will, I don't believe a word that woman said. Do you believe her husband? Well, no, not necessarily. But Roy Acuff liked her, and I'd believe him if he said the world was going to end tomorrow. Look at it this way, we don't have to call the cops. Lieutenant Flocker, we ain't bums or nothing. We're just a couple of guys from Montana who dreamed all their life about coming to this town, about seeing all this beautiful country. And these down-home friendly folks, we love that. Matter of fact, I was telling Will. Don't try conning me, mister. You're talking to the wrong man. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm not from Nashville. And the only reason I'm here is because my girl's married here. And I don't like their husbands. And I don't like country music. And I don't like southern accents. Well, no offense. I... Or good old boys. Or grits. Or moonshine. But most of all, I don't like concrete cowboys that drift from town to town raising hell. I'm gonna lock you up. Uh, I don't think the law will let you lock us up. You don't mind my saying so. Listen, I know what the law will or will not let me do. If you can show me the law we just broke, okay, you lock us up. But don't forget the doctrine of culpability. Hey, that sounds like a good one. Tell him what that means. It relates to a situation where a person confronted by overwhelming pressure makes a choice between two evils. You mean like, should we get ourselves shot or should we run into the wall, right? That's right. A man cannot be held punishable should his life or liberty be in jeopardy. It's all there in the seas. Civil, common, criminal law. He's in the seas now, so all this pressure on his mind. <laughs> get out of here. And make sure I don't ever see either one of you again. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh... Hey, hey, I don't know why you want to go honky tonky, will you, man? Put a Carla's picture again, will you? All right. Well, what do you see? An awful pretty girl. Now behind her, the sign, Alley Cat uh, Amateur Night, right? Right. And where are we? We're British Alley. What's that sign say? Alley Cat Club. All right. I'll make a detective out of you yet. Come on. Oh, saw it. <laughs> hey, Will, Ray Stevens is here tonight. Street drums are flailing and sirens are wailing, what a roar. 
bands are a playing and flags are a waving and the vanguards a motorcycle corps. Clowns are clowning to the crowd and pinching every pretty girl who dares to smile. It's a glorious mess, everybody wears a fizz, the parade stretches out for a mile. It's a typical American phenomenon where all the members have a fine old time. It's the 43rd annual convention of the Grand Mystic Royal Order of the Nobles of the Alibaba Temple of the Shrine. Operator, give me room 321, please. Thank you. Hello, Noble Lumpkin. This is the Luster's Potentate. I said it's the Luster's Potentate. The Luster's Coy. Dad, blame it, this here's Bubba. Why don't you to parade? What? How'd you get that big Harley up there in your room? <laughs> by the ladies' auxiliary in the downtown convention hall. Cold roast beef, string beans, mashed potatoes, and nine boring speeches and all. And all the tables look fine with the Mogan David wine and chrysanthemums on each side. And the hay hire leaders in the rented tux seaters made the local heart swell with pride. It's a typical American phenomenon where all the members have a fine old time. It's the 43rd annual convention of the Grand Mystic Royal Order of the Nobles the only bomb of the shrine. Well, back at the motel. Hello, operator. Room 320. <laughs> How'd you know? Oh. Hello, Coy. Where have you been? <laughs> no, you wasn't at the meeting. <laughs> well, I found out that at 3 o'clock this morning you was out there in the hotel swimming pool and you threw the looms and bunched them waitresses from the cocktail lounge. <laughs> I just hope Charlene don't find out about this, Coy. Who's that in the background, Coy? Hello, operator? Operator, please cut off! Coy, please, one! Coy! Sings pretty good. Oh, boy, am I hungry. Whew. Sings pretty good. That was Ray Stevens. The Ray Stevens. Ray who? Oh. Will you do me a favor? While you're in the seas, read up on some country music, would you? You're embarrassing me. Well, you better pay less attention to what you called up there and more attention to the trouble we're in. Somebody tried to kill us. Maybe. Maybe somebody just mistook us for somebody else. You ever think about that? Yeah. Or maybe somebody don't want us to find out about Carla. Well, now that's dumb. Carla's dead. Yeah, but how did she die? You think she's murdered? That's something we won't know till we find out. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, Mr. Stevens, can I have your autograph, please? Why, sure. Glad to. Here. Who shall I make this out to? Well, I'm J.D., and, and this is my friend Will here. J.D., hi, Will. How you doing? How are you? Great. 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 Super chef. Hey. Thanks, hon. Great. Appreciate you coming. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Barbara Mandrell, J.D., and Will. Hello. Hello. Paul, we're in a heap of trouble here. <laughs> Why? Well, Miss Mandrell, I'm going to have to go home, and I'm going to have to tell some friends of mine that I spoke to you in person. And when I do, one of them's going to call me a liar. And when he does, I'm going to hit him in the mouth, and it's going to be the awfulest fight. <laughs> then that's going to get Will here in a fight. He's just angling for an autograph, Pam. <laughs> yeah, Let me give him one. I certainly wouldn't want to be responsible for any brawls. <laughs> Listen, i got to go change. Barbara, I'll see you at your table okay, later. Ray. Nice meeting you guys. Ray, nice meeting you, Ray. Ray. Show. You fellas here on a visit? Uh, well, no, actually, we are private detectives. Actually, uh, we're helping this girl we know find her sister. Any chance you've seen her? Will, this is Barbara Mandrell. She does not work talent shows, okay? My buddy here's pretty good at detecting, but he ain't from nothing about country music now. Me, I got every record you ever made. Hey, I've My... seen this girl right in here. There was an amateur contest, and she won it, and the prize was appearing one night with me. Uh, Carol, I think, was her name. Carla. Carla Wade. Yeah. The man that can tell you about her runs this wax museum down here. Barnaby is his name. Oh, no, no. We've already talked to him. He hadn't seen her since she left, what, three months ago? Well, the night she sang with me, he was there. She was good, too. Not polished, but a lot of promise and a really nice girl. He was giving her a hassle back in the dressing room, and the management had the cops throw him out. You know what the argument was about, ma'am? 
Well, as near as I could make out, he was really hopping mad because she was coming on to this awful dude, Joe Hatchet. Looks like we ought to talk to this hat check guy. Yeah. Well, if you do, you watch yourselves. He smiles a lot, but he's a killer. He's mean. He's into a lot of things, and most of them are crooked. Like what, ma'am? Well, for one thing, I've heard that he runs a floating crap game where nobody comes out of winter. Oh! Well, now, where would somebody find that floating crap game? <laughs> well, I don't know anything about dice, but my steel guitar player does. In fact, he's into about three months' salary worth of dice. He lost it on the Cumberland Queen. be great. Not for me, it ain't. What's wrong? I get seasick. On a boat tied to the dock? I get seasick in a bathtub. Let's find hat check and get this over with. Take this money we got left here, and I'm gonna go down there and get in that game and turn this into a small river bottom farm because dice is my long suit. Last time I heard poker was your long suit, son. I feel lucky tonight. The lucky guy in that game is the one that don't get his legs broke. Mr. Hatchack? This dude faded 500. He yes, hasn't got it. He wants to leave his marker with us. I don't take markers. Take his watch and his rings and throw them out. Oh, you fellows are just in town a couple of days and you've already located the action, huh? Tell you the truth, action ain't what we're looking for. It's answers. And so far, they've been pretty hard to get. I run a game, fella. Not an information desk. Well, you knew Carla Wade, and we want to find out what happened to him. Do you see how healthy I am? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not from jogging. It's from minding my own business. This is our business. Come on, pal. I know every cop in this town. You ain't no cop. Ah, uh, well, let's just say there's some dudes up in New York City got a big interest in what happened to Carla, OK? And they're dudes with a lot of muscle. You dig? Look, I don't know what happened to her. But I'll tell you something, whatever it is, I hope it's bad. She is a no-good, blood-sucking... All I know is she got what she wanted out of me and my contacts. A few introductions, some club dates, a couple commercials. Then I talked to this friend of mine who, uh, who owed me a few favors to let her host us to this jockey convention. <laughs> and she meets Mr. Superstar. Who's the superstar? I got a problem here, Mr. Hatchet? No, it's all right. These, uh, these fellows were sent in by some heavy characters from New York. Well, they told the lookout topside. They were tourists in Montana. You want to explain that? Uh, yeah. Uh, number one, what's wrong with Montana? Number two, me and my buddy Will here visiting Opryland. And my godfather in New York sent us some orders. You dig? Why don't you, uh, find out what these fellows really want, and then drop them off at the hospital. J.D.! Oh. Oh. 
Ain't you glad I'm here to help you out, son? Oh, glad my insurance is paid up. Oh, that's the guy that don't like cowboys. Hey, I wonder how the police knew we was in trouble. Maybe they heard it from your godfather in New York. See, we got a serious complaint we want to put on record. I spent the last four hours trying to find something to pin on you two and make it stick. But since you weren't in the game, the DA won't charge you. Well, that's only fair. I'm one of you. Either you two get out of Nashville, or I'm going to find a way to have your hides. Now, that's our serious complaint. You've been spending a lot of energy trying to pin something on us. Yeah, and we think your time would be better spent out protecting innocent citizens of Nashville. We've been shot at, beat up, somebody tries to to blow us up all on the same day. Heck, there's more violence here than in the whole state of Texas, with New York City and Detroit thrown in. Let them out. Out! Get out! Thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, and, and just be glad we ain't taxpaying citizens. First off, I'm gonna take me one of the sexy bubble baths. You do that while I throw us up some eggs, okay? I think Lieutenant Blocker had been here. I wonder what they're looking for. Hey, the package. The one we picked up for Lonnie Grind. Maybe. Well, did they get it? Nope, I hit it good. Will, you reckon we ought to call the cops? J.D., that fight last night must have scrambled your brain. Phone. Where's the phone? Hello. Oh, Lonnie. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, everything's just fine. Well, I'm calling you from Memphis. I just wanted to check on you boys and make sure you're enjoying yourselves. Oh, we're enjoying ourselves. Oh, by the way, did you remember to pick up that package for me? Right. Picked up the package, put it away safe. Good thing, too, Lonnie, because we come in here a minute ago, and somebody has just ransacked your place. Now, don't worry about it, though. We'll clean it up. We'll take care of everything. Yeah. Well, we'll see you. All right. Well, send you his best, Will. What did he say about his place getting tore up? Not much. You know, maybe in his line of work, his digs get tore up all the time. I don't know. I wonder what's in that package of his. I don't know. He won't look. We're guests in his house. Hardly seems a thing to do. You know, I could ask him. What you should ask him is what a real detective does when he's been worked over the way we've been. Well, Kojak would probably just keep on sucking on his sucker. Ah! Perry Mason would probably talk to Della for a day I and a half. I said a real detective, J.D. Now, a real detective would have given up the case and shagged on out of here before he got his head broke. You know what's bugging me, Will? Now, we asked a few questions about Carla, and me and you darn near killed. But now, Kate's been asking questions all over this town before she ever got to us. You're right. That lady could be in more trouble than we are. We better go warn her. Come on. Go about the 
is Kate Harper. Did you know if she got our message? No, sir, she didn't. I'll try a room for you. Thank you. Sorry, gentlemen, no answer. Well, sir, I guess uh, since we're here, we ought to mess around a while until she comes in. Ma'am? Thank you. Son, I can spend a week right here. Opryland. Opryland. Yeah, the opera right across the road. You ever been to opera? No. Boy, you'll love it. I bet there's 50 stars within a half mile of us right this minute. Oh, all of them just panting, waiting for you to ask them to sign an autograph. Well, suppose. Now, just suppose they got her. Who? Kate. She's just out, you know, maybe shopping or something. Yeah, or maybe she's laying up there in a the pool of blood. Where are you going? Up to Kate's room. Man, come on. You're still in the seas. We're already breaking and entering. I'm not going to have no part in digging into somebody's private belongings. Well, we ain't going to find out any clues as to what happened to her by just staring at the lid. Nothing's happened to her. It's it maybe in your messed up head. Well, a detective has just got to take a chance at worry. Work it out of the way. Just can't be still. I don't know where I'm bound, but I know I'm bound to ramble around and taste of this old life until I've had my fill. Now I ain't no telling where tomorrow's gonna find me. Maybe riding some old boxcar or sleeping in the rain. I might strike it rich in California. Then we get all on the East Coast in a loaded poker game. See a great big piece of this world. Look out, this cowboy's breaking loose. Head of yours, we don't know what the devil we're doing. We are solving our case. That's what we're doing. Look here. I found this in Kate's suitcase. Now she should have given us this up front, because this is a song, and it was especially written by Woody Stone. And look what it says right there. To my sweet Carla from the one who loves you more than life. And that's Woody's name right down there. Woody who? Woody is probably the biggest 
the most famous, the most important country star there ever was. That's who Woody is. And he was in love with Carla. Well, I guess if we're gonna get this over with, we might as well just go on up there and see him. You don't just go up and see him. He's got agents, he's got managers, bodyguards. You could see the president. Look, in... we're just gonna go out to his place, ring the bell. Well, would you just get on with reading the encyclopedia? Because the truth of the matter is, you're about 10 volumes away from being more than plain dumb. And until you get to the D's, you probably ain't gonna know what dumb is. Dumb? I'll tell you what dumb is. Dumb is ending up in Nashville instead of Hollywood. Dumb is pretending we're detectives. Dumb is driving somebody else's car into a police station. Dumb is spending the night in a tank, and dumb is looking for a pool of blood where there ain't one. That's what dumb is. Well, I never said it was perfect. Uh, but hey, Will, I got an idea. Go. No! Well, get us to see Wally Stone. No! Well, don't say no to him, but I got to say no. I ain't gonna have no part of this. Will you trust me? Look I am just gonna stay here outside and wait for the police to come. And when they do, well, I'm gonna laugh fit to die when they haul you off the lieutenant blocker. Just trust and me. And when he hangs you by your tongue from the city hall flagpole, I'm gonna wait down below just to claim your ornery body. Good day, sir. Oh, howdy, neighbor. Is there something I can do to assist you? Well, now I reckon it's more what I can do to assist you, my good man. You see, I work for a gentleman called Will Eubanks the Ford. Now, he's got four boys. And when he buys something for one of them, well, he has to buy it for all of them, you know. Give them all an oil well at least when they was born, you know. And so now old Will wants to buy all his boys one of these here uh, uh, Excelsiors. One each? That's what he said. Four Excaliburs? No, actually he wants five. He wants one for himself. But there's some things we got to wig out here first. Now, does this, uh... Does this work? Everything works. Well, old Will ain't never had him no custom-made car before, so J.D. says to me, he says, you make sure everything works before you ever sign a check. I understand that. Remember, this is an Excalibur. Right, and that's what he wants, an Excalibur. And I figure I can judge this pretty good driving it the next couple of days. Your references, uh, sir, the banks are closed for the weekend. Oh, the banks, yeah, the banks. Oh, we'll have got four banks itself. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do, look. You hold off detailing the other cars till you get the paperwork okay. I'll try this one out, and when I come in Monday, we'll sign the papers. How's that? You will be careful of her, sir. Just like she was my own. <laughs> I'll give you this, J.D. You could start with a toothpick and end up with a lumber yard. <laughs> Hey, my good man, we're delivering this car to Mr. Stone. It's a present from his fans out in Montana. Okay, up the drive and park it. Thanks, sir. Fellas, I agreed to see you because anybody with imagination to bring that car up to my place and convince my people it's a gift for me, well, they deserve a little attention. <laughs> Told you he was a sport, didn't I tell you? <laughs> I'm sorry I can't help you. This girl you're looking for, what's her name? Carla Wade. Yeah, I don't know. And to my regulation, I never did. I've got some recording to do in the studio out back. You guys can find your way out, huh? Sure. Thanks. You betcha. Sing it. Every night I go down to the same little joint. Fill up my glass till I've reached a point. Past remembering. Okay, where'd you get the song? Don't matter. What matters is that you wrote it for Carla. Yeah, I did. One drink? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. What do you fellas have to do with Carla? She's dead. We want to find out why. Carla's dead? 
You want to tell us about it? Sure. Doesn't make any difference now that Carla's gone. She was one of those girls who thought it was an honor to be a hostess when the celebrities came to town. That's what she was doing at the disc jockey's convention. Ended up at my table. Mr. Superstar. Yeah, I guess. For a while, that was good enough for her. Woody Stone's girlfriend. I took her on the concert tours, took her to recording studios, took her to party. There was something in that girl that just wouldn't let her rest. I mean, being with a star wasn't quite like being a star. But, uh, she had talent. She had a pretty face and a sensational body. That's what she had. And a voice as good as a lot of big names. But she didn't understand the lyrics. She didn't know what they meant. She didn't... She didn't love the audience. Well, she didn't love anybody, I suppose. Except this picture she had of herself as a rich, famous star that she was going to become. So, uh, you chucked her out. <laughs> no, I did not. Wish it had been that way. I was just sitting down for supper one night, and she came through the door. Well? I couldn't do it, honey. I'm sorry. You didn't even try, did you? I asked them to do an album with you. I even promised them that I'd write a couple of songs. You asked them? Why, why didn't you threaten them? Look, you're their biggest star. They'll do anything for you. You, you sell millions of records for them. I mean, they're my friends. They brought me along when I was first starting out. You don't want me to make it, do you? All you ever want me to be is just your little playmate. Uh, you know better than that. You gotta have patience. It takes time. Look, I know a guy's got a club in Atlanta. You I can... know, I know. And you have a friend who has a club in Charlotte. And you have a friend who has a club in Knoxville. And I have worked my buns off in those dingy holes three shows a night for 400 bucks a week. You know you don't have to do it for money. I'll give you anything you want. It's an album. That's all I've ever asked you for. That's all I've ever asked you to do for me. And what do you do about it? Nothing. All right. Tomorrow. No. I... No, there is not going to be any more tomorrow. Not with you. I am sick to death of you. I am sick to death of watching these no talent hicks make it while I'm just sitting around in your shadow. And you want to know something else? I am sick to death of sleeping in an old man's bed. I'm getting out tonight, right now. And that's just what she did. I never saw her again. I heard that she... Well, never mind. No, 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 go on, please. Well, I heard stuff I didn't want to believe. Believe what, sir? Well, she met this guy, Mr. Smooth, you know. No good written all over him, tattoos, all that. He got her to work at Peg's place. He did that all the time. Did what? recruited girls for Peg's Place. You mean Peg's Place is... It's what we call a good time house. It's off Murfreesboro Road. Can't believe it. Well, I didn't want to believe it. So I finally just stopped thinking about it. And that's really all I can tell you guys. I'm sorry. Appreciate you laying on the line. Well, once you had the goods on me about that song, I didn't have much choice, did I? Well, good luck to you. Thanks. And goodbye. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Peterson! Those two cowboys are the wrong guys. But they're the ones... I don't care. You near killed the wrong guys. That means that whoever we're after is out there someplace. Follow those two. Maybe they'll lead us to whatever it is we're looking for. We gotta find out what happened to that girl. We found out a lot already. Ain't much of it good either. I mean, look at her eyes. Come on, look at her eyes. Now, she should be happy. She just won a contest. I mean, she's smiling, but her eyes are sad, like she's hurting inside or something, you know? Well, that could be, but after what those people now, Kate told knew her, her better than anybody. Kate says she's a decent, sweet girl. Barnaby said she's a treasure. Roy Acuff meets her one time. He's crazy about it. What about Mrs. Barnaby? 
Patchek, and Woody Stone. Okay, Miss Barnaby. Now, she's a dried up old prune that don't want a pretty girl around. Now, Hatchek's a warthog if I've ever seen one. I mean, Barbara Mandrell said don't mess around with him. You can't trust him. I suppose you don't believe Woody Stone either. No, he's just like Hatchek. He wanted something from her. She ain't gonna have it. Chances are everything Woody Stone told us is a lie, especially the part about her going to work over at Peg's place. Well, we'll soon find out. You are a mess, J.D. We ain't get no place, Lil. So from now on, we're just gonna nose around, quit letting on like we're detectives. There's only one person that's mistook us for a detective so far, and that's you. Great home, Peg. A lot of class. Well, thank you. One thing I tell my girls, girls, what the customer expects is class, and class is what they're going to get. I send the girls to deportment school. They teach them to behave like real ladies. They just love me for it. Oh, I can see they would. Uh, where are they? Oh, well, it's early yet. They're still downtown. Some of them are at the hospital, and some at the Red Cross giving blood. They're big on volunteer work. But I think my Juliet's around someplace. Look, what, what about Carla? Carla Way? She doesn't work here anymore. She quit just before Thanksgiving. My busiest time, the ungrateful little... But I'll see you're both taken care of. Juliet! Juliet's a dear, sweet girl. She looks on me like a mother. Juliet, honey, would you mind coming down here a minute? What do you want? Well, I wanted you to meet these two gentlemen. Boys, this is Juliet. I told you, Peg, I ain't starting work till 8. And I told you, honey, you start when I tell you, you start in a cast. Put them on. Take them off. <laughs> Come right on in here, boys, and have a seat. Have a drink and think about what's in store for you. Well, what'll it be? Water. Uh, about Carla? Oh, forget about her. If Carla's a five, Juliet's a ten. Here's your water. Thank you, Miss Peck. Did you know, uh, Carla's boyfriend? He owes Will and me a bunch of money, see? She's got too many boyfriends to even count. Well, the one we're interested in is a regular boyfriend. The one's got the tattoo. That creep? Uh-huh. Listen, fellas. Whatever he owes you, forget it. And don't try leaning on him. He's a hard case. Do you do you dirty? Well, we heard that uh, he's the one that brought Carla to you. Brought her to me? Nobody does that. You know, I can't understand why after she gets to the top, she give all this up anyway. Well, most that go leave to get married. So they can work for free and wash diapers to boot. <laughs> <laughs> but I never did understand why Carla left. Last time I talked to her was right here in this room. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute, honey? Oh, well, I... Excuse us. Your boyfriend's upstairs chewing his nails. Hey, um, do me a favor, okay? Just... Just tell him I haven't made up my mind yet. Tell him I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow. Listen, honey, I don't want to have no trouble. Go up there and get rid of him. Now! And that was that. That was the last I saw of her. She just packed her things and skedaddled. Not even a thank you. When did all this happen? I can tell you exactly. Because it was my birthday. November the 20th. Make yourself at home, fellas. I heard you. I heard you, but I ain't gonna do it. You got to do it. All right, well, promise me I don't have to do anything but dance. Oh, something. you're a good talker. You'll work it out. Now go to it, lover. Have I really got to? I've got to. Come in! Uh, excuse me, Miss Peg. Oh, well, what can I do for you, dear? Well, it, it's like this. Uh, Julie's an awfully pretty girl. Uh, but, but I've got this... Uh, well, let's just say I go from over two ladies, okay? Especially if they're as pretty as you. And I was wondering if uh, you'd have a drink with me. Just a drink, dear? Well, I thought we'd start with a drink. Well, I don't usually drink with my customers, but I gotta admit, you wake up my sleepy old hormone. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of my fourth husband. Really? He was a pistol. A pistol? Do exactly what he wanted and how to go about getting it, just the way you do. Well, then why don't you be my guest? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Where, where's your friend? Oh, well, well, he ain't as fresh as I am, Peg, so he's upstairs availing himself of the amenities. Finish my drink. Now what did you have in mind? Uh, another drink. Now we don't buy champagne by the glass, we buy it by the bottle. Well, it's five bucks a shot. Well, it's only money and that's one thing we got plenty of, right? You just bring out another bottle of that. Now, J.D. and I, we got to jump into our Excalibur and leave. But we'll be back. Then you'll see how the real big spenders operate. Uh, you just keep the change. Come on, J.D., I'll drive. Oh, Miss Peck. If you should hear from Carla's boyfriend, you just tell him that we're interested in seeing him. We'd be much obliged. Ma'am. Fifty dollar tilt. You loco, that's what's the matter with you. Throwing money around like some kind of drunk sailor. Stop running your mouth. Dial his number. Well, who is it? That's Carla's number one regular boyfriend. I thought Woody Stone was. Dial the number, J.D. And then shut up for a change and listen. Hello? Hello, who is this? That was Lonnie Grimes. What makes you so sure Grimes will show up anyway? Soon as Peg tells him how we've been splashing money around, he'll have to. Why? Because he'll think it's his money. What money? Which? You opened a package. I took a peek. All right, well, how much was in it? I didn't count it. Oh, come on, was there $10,000 in it? More. Well, 20? 50? More than 50? 200,000. Dollars? Thereabouts. Oh, jeez, I don't know there's that much money short of Fort Knox. No wonder everybody's been trying to kill us. Where'd you hide it? Well, hi there. Hello. Nice to finally see you. Well, it's good to see you, Lonnie. J.D., isn't it? Right, you remember Will. How's everything been going? Just great. Couldn't be better. We're just surprised to see you, that's all. Oh, I'm just passing through town. I gotta get back to my case in Memphis. I thought I'd drop by and get that package picked up for me. What was in that package, Lonnie? Me and Will nearly got killed over that thing. Okay, I'm gonna be straight with you guys. You level with me, I'll level with you. About what? Well, you showed up here. You told me you were busted broke. Just a few minutes ago, the manager downstairs tells me you're uh, driving an Excalibur. <laughs> well, Lonnie, we was broke when we got to town, but see, we called our banker and he sent us uh, some of our oil royalties. Well, I'll be. Okay, Lonnie, since you're all for leveling with one another, I think it's your turn. Yeah, why'd you set us up? Set you up? What do you mean? I must have missed something. Only thing you missed was getting shot at, near blowed up. Of course, I reckon that didn't bother you, seeing as you had J.D. and me around. Yeah, a couple of yo-yos right into town, just fall in your lap. You realize the legwork we could have saved ourselves, J.D.? We've been wandering around six days from Sunday trying to find Carla, and all we had to do was talk to her boyfriend here. I underestimated you two. Don't feel bad. It happens all the time. I didn't know Carla. There's nothing heavy. I met her on a rebound from a flame with a big, big star. Woody Stone. She had it in her head to make an album. A client of mine was willing to produce it if she'd come up with the bucks. You told her how to do it. Nobody had to tell Carla anything. She saw the only way she was going to make that kind of dough was the way women have made it for thousands of years. I tried to talk her out of it. I'll bet. I did. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a small town in a lot of ways. Woody Stone found out what Carla was working in, with bananas. He was waiting for her when she came back to her apartment one night. I happened to call her about the album. 
I knew she was in big trouble right there. I tore right over there. Carla, you can come back with me. Now, I'm, I want you to come back with me. Carla? Woody, please just get out of here. I don't want you involved when they find me. Honey, I am involved. I love you. Now, Woody! I could think of was that it would be my word against Woody Stones. I guess how far that would have got me. He's close to being a national monument. I decided to clear out. Didn't seem to be anything else I could do. So go on. What next? I guess whoever cleaned up a mess for Woody must have been there all the time. I was. Next thing I knew, he'd hired himself a professional killer to knock me off. That's why I left town. Believe me, fellas, I didn't realize you'd get caught up in all this. I guess you're living here, driving my car. Woody's man must have figured you was the ones he's supposed to be after. You really got the sharp end of the stick, Lonnie. Well, you sure did. Guess we owe you an apology. Oh, thanks, fellas. What I need to do right now is get that package and get out of town. That killer's still on the loose. By now, he knows you're the wrong mark. I'll get the package. Hmm. That Carla. She was something special, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Must have been like one of them chameleons or something, changing colors all the time, you know? Hello? Have you got it? Have you got the money? Yeah. Okay, look, let's just get this over with, okay? Uh, put one of them on the line. Hey, it's for you. This is for you. Thank you. Hello? It's Kate Harper. Uh, this is Will. Will, I... I think I know where Carlo's body is. You do? Where? Well, I, I wanted you and J.D. to meet me there. Do you think you could do that? Sure can. Meet you there in 20 minutes. You take care now. Bye. She says she knows where Carlo's body is. Let's go. If you guys had enough trouble, I'll come with you. I'll follow my car. You know, about your car. Uh, oh, I'm driving a renter. Good. All that stuff Brian's been telling you. My mama didn't raise no idiots. Well, then how come you give him all the money? It's a grave, y'all. Come on. People hang out in graves, yeah. She said it was around here someplace. This will do fine. Well, now, what was this about your mama not raising no idiot? Maybe just one. Looks like we was expected. I'm sorry about this, fellas. I really am. But you know too much for me to be leaving you running around. You let him get away. I don't care anymore. I'm getting out of here. Well, wait, we don't have to. I already took care of Woody Stone's hired gun. Now, all we have to do is get rid of those two cowboys, and we're in the clear. You get rid of them. I'm splitting. I'm getting as far away from Nashville as I can. And I'm going by myself. What do you mean? Just what I said. Can you give me that? I don't want you following me. Do you hear me? Lonnie, please. Don't get Lonnie! Lonnie, please! Howdy, Kate. Well. Hey, don't stop! Get her on her! Oh. Let's go with slapping a nut. Let's go, Carla. Carla, 
I've been listening to every word all this time, and I still can't understand how you give it up. I finally just had to face the truth. This town didn't want me. Look, Nashville is a town for insiders. I was always going to be on the outside looking in. All these nobodies with no talent. Goony-looking girls from the hills. They were the ones who were making it big. I never would. So after all that, after Barnaby, Hatchek, Woody Stone, and Peg's place, you decided to cash it in? I just decided to take what I could, whatever I could, and go somewhere else and start over. Maybe open a modeling school or get a band together and tour with it. All of which takes a lot of money, right? Right. And Lonnie had a way to get it. It was his idea. As soon as he realized Woody Stone would do anything to get me back, Lonnie came up with a plan. Some things will kill you. Sometimes I don't care if it does. Go on, Carly, you were talking about Lonnie's plan. Well, it was simple, really. I just moved some of my things out of here and into a little apartment. Then I called Woody and told him I was going to kill myself. Carla, you can come back with me. Now, I want you to come back. Woody, please, I don't, don't want you here. I don't want you involved when they find me. I am involved. Woody, I mean, look, please, no, wait. no, Carla, no. 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 Loaded with blanks. Well, after that, Lonnie started blackmailing Woody until Woody got sick of paying and decided to hire himself a killer. That's when we came along. Well, Woody didn't know who the blackmailer was, so he had the post office staked out. That's where he picked up you two. That's when I started to have to pretend I was my own sister. Look, it wasn't my idea. You have to believe me. I, I was just scared and desperate. Makes sense to me. Well, Lonnie's got the money now. He's got everything. What he's got is a package full of cut-up newspaper. Where's the money? I got it safe. Now, we're going to do our best to straighten this out, Carla. So why don't you go freshen up? J.D. and I got some planning to do. You know, I knew the first time I saw you two that you were good people. That's us, honey. A couple of good old down-home boys. Good old down-home fools. That's what you are, J.D. Reed. What do you mean being taken advantage of? She was in trying to get us killed in the first place, for Pete's sake. All right, well, where's the money? I've been carrying it around since the place got ransacked. Probably by Lonnie Grimes, you know. You've been walking around with $200,000 in your boots? I figured it's the safest place for it. Well, Will, you banks, you need to be in an Okay, now, asylum. calm down. How have I got tied up with you for part of I me. said calm down. Okay, you calm? Yeah, I'm calm, but I'm no prayer. Just be got still. To... Calm? Yes, I'm calm. See the calm, look at the calm. <sighs> now, listen. Ever since we got here, folks been trying to set us up. We get an inch off being killed five times over. I'll tell you, J.D., I'm getting tired of it. Well, that makes two of us. There's three people we got to take care of. Lonnie Grimes, Woody Stone, and that gal in there. And they do need some taken care of. That is for sure and for certain. There's some dead bodies lying around that somebody's going to have to do some paying for it. Now, what we got to do is set it up so the right people have to pay for it. Oh, you mean uh, time to loose ends like Buddy Epson and Jack Lord? Right. Great, but how are you going to do it? Tell you how. Yes. Hi there, Mr. Stone. Will Eubank, remember me? What do you want? I understand you're out some money. What are you talking about? I'm talking about two hundred thousand dollars. But if you don't want it back, forget it. Nice talking to you, sir. All right, now wait a minute. You mean you can get me the cash back? Sure can. What do I have to do? Just go pick it up. Carla? No, Lonnie, it's Will Eubank. You better never turn your back, fella, because if it takes me 10 years, I'm going to bury you both. Oh, no, hold it. 
it down. Don't work yourself into a fit. We're willing to work and trade with you. Your money for our butts. Where's the money? All right, now you take this down. All right, go ahead. Take care now. Well, that about does it, I guess, except for the lady back there. You want to talk to her? You want me to? No, you handle it. I got another call to make. Come in. Let's go, Carla. You're going to turn me in, aren't you? Carla. J.D., look, I have been used by every person since I hit this town. Please, don't turn me in. I deserve better than that. I know you do, I know you do, and I promise you won't get any more than you deserve. You mean that, don't you? Cross my heart. Cross my heart, too. You too much. Both of you. Ain't that a fact? Blackmailing me. Well, you're the creep that hired the professional killer. You're damn right I did. You try to get out of here with this money. Oh, no threats. I got the gun, Big Star. And if you spill to the cops, I'll tell them about your hitman. What he did to hat check makes you an accomplice to murder. Put the gun on the floor, line. Killed one man last night. Now one more is not going to make any difference. Hide your people. Hold it right there. That's fine. Hey, ain't we partners? I'm afraid so. All right. Well, don't partners make decisions together? I guess. Why won't you listen to my idea? Okay, ideas? let's talk about your idea. Well, that's better. But before we do, I just want to tell you I ain't going to stay another sundown in Nashville. Well, that's fine. Let's go to New York. How about Hollywood? No, Hollywood's too far away. Well, let's go to New York. The rodeo's in New York. We can make money. If I wanted to get my neck broke, I'd have stayed on the ranch. Well, how about Chicago? How about Hollywood? How about Kansas City? I know this chick that runs an escort service. He'll put us both I ain't work. no gigolo. And I've already been to Kansas City. All right, how about New Orleans? You ain't never been to New Orleans? See the Mardi Gras. Hey, Jim Austin. Oh, the Mardi Gras in February. Let's go to Hollywood. Okay, okay, okay. We'll go to Hollywood. But first, let's stop, baby. I can get a job dealing. You can get a job driving a cab. Las Vegas ain't no place to go when you're broke. How about Detroit? I ain't never built cars. I'll tell you what, J.D. Let's just hop freight west, and wherever it takes us, that's where we'll go. Okay, I like that. Okay, now, first thing we got to do, take this car back. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm the one that went to get the car. The least you can do is take the car back. No. You're a hard man, will you, Banks? I try. Hey, I'll tell you what. We'll make a compromise. You don't take it back, and I don't either. Oh, J.D.'s got a plan. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> you a mess, Will. <laughs> Am 
mighty short time. Well, some of them just born lucky, I guess. Ah, uh, man, this is a car. You know, when good folks go to heaven, this is what they got to be riding in. That freight pulling out? Uh, right away. Where's it headed? West. You want to uh, look the other way for a spell? The next town might not be so friendly. Better keep it. <laughs> now get going. Hey, I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you drive until it runs out of gas and then call the Excelsior people and tell them we don't want it, okay? Trying to protect your soul 